What's up everyone? Today we're going to be making this top-down car right here. Now, one thing you'll probably notice is that it actually looks like a car. I mean, it's not turning in place. I actually have to give it some gas to be able to turn. It's not drifting to the side. Like, it's actually restricted in its movement. Like, there's a lot of tutorials online about how to make top-down cars, but I think most of them you know, or just like a, a ball with a, a car model on them, or, you know, like, um, they'll be able to turn in place, and it's not very realistic, it's not very fun. Like, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, the original GTA games, like GTA 1 and GTA 2, and, you know, I really wanted to make a car controller like this. So I'm really excited to share this information with you today. We'll be making it with Love2D and Lua, but really the principles I'm showing you could be used with any any game engine that has a similar physics system. So, you know, any game engine with uh, forward and sideways vectors and rigid bodies will be able to do the same thing that I'm showing you here. And I want to say I did not come up with all of the, the code ideas myself. I took a lot of inspiration from this website right here. I definitely recommend checking it out. There's a real wealth of information here on Box2D. So, let's get started. Okay, let's jump right into the code. Now, I have a fresh project here. I have a physics world that's having its gravity set to zero. I have a background texture just so I have something to look at. And I have something new here, I have a car object. The car's definition is being defined in a different Lua file. We're going to look at that later, but for now, just know that it's being set to the, the middle of the screen, and it's having the physics world passed into it. And it's being updated here, an update, and the world is being updated, and the background texture is being drawn, and the car is being drawn. So, let's just look at that. Okay, and as you expect, we see the background and we see the car. Now, obviously, I did not draw these sprites. Uh, the background sprites are from Kenny, and this car was made by somebody named Toka. I think they did a great job, so definitely check them out. So I'm going to close that. And I'm not, I'm not going to draw the background now, just because it's too distracting. So let's look at the car file. So this is car.lua. And I have here a new table called car, and a constructor function, and an update, and a render. And if you didn't know, this is actually the Lua equivalent of a class. If you've ever used C++ or Python, you have a thing called a class, where the object is able to use its own functions. But to do that in Lua, you have to set its meta table, and you have to set its index right here. Uh, that's a topic for another video, but just know that this thing right here is a, is a class or an object. And we have here the texture being loaded in. And in the constructor, we're not doing anything we haven't seen. We're just setting the position, rotation. We're creating a new physics object. We're getting the width and height from the texture. And we're creating a new rectangle shape from the width and the height. So this is stuff we've seen in previous videos. Now, if we look here at update, we're just doing uh, WSAD keys. So nothing's happening right now, but I just have these input functions here. And then in render, you know, we're just rendering the texture at the object's position and the object's rotation. Okay. So here in our update function, uh, we are going to check our W and our S keys, and that's how we're going to move forward or backwards. So, first of all, let's set a forward speed. I'm going to call it forward, uh, forward force. And I'm going to set it to a high number, a thousand. So, when we press W, you know, we could do what we've done before uh, self.body, set linear velocity. You know, we could do that. And that works perfectly fine if you're moving a character. Like, what it does is it just sets the velocity directly, but the problem with that is it doesn't take into account things like acceleration. Like when you're driving a car, you want to be able to speed up gradually, 
slow down gradually. Maybe there'll be some drag and some friction. Uh, so if you use set linear velocity, you're not really going to get any of that. So what I like to do instead is apply force. And that's going to take in a vector value. So we want 0 on the x, because that's sideways, but y is forwards and backwards. So we're going to make that negative forward force, because up, up and y is going to be negative. If we want to move up and y, it's going to be negative. And then if we want to move back, it's going to be positive. Okay. Now there's one more thing. If you remember, we have to set the position, because we're drawing from the x and the y. So self.x self dot y equals self dot body get position and while we're at it let's set the rotation to self dot body get angle okay All right, let's run that and see how it looks uh, if i press w well, yes we are accelerating forward and if i press s we are going back Okay, good. So the next thing we want to do is turning. Sorry, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, if you don't set some kind of damping, like some kind of friction on the car, it's just going to roll on and on. So I'm going to do that here in the constructor. So we have set linear damping, and it will just be the random value of 0 0.8. I believe it's somewhere between 0 or 1. Uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 works fine for this. Okay, so now let's add some steering. So we're going to turn with the A and the D keys. So just like with the forward force, I'm going to set a turn value. And when we do that, we actually want this to be in radians, not degrees. But I think in degrees, so I'm going to do math.rad. What this does is it converts a degree value to a radian value. So I'm going to set that at 30 degrees. See, that that's converted into radians, so we don't have to worry about it. So self.body, and which function should we use for rotation? Well, there's a few functions we can use, and I'm going to do something very dirty here, something I don't normally recommend. But just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do set angular velocity. Normally, you want to use apply torque, but to make things simple and easy for ourselves, I'm going to do this. I'll set that to the, well, this is going to be the negative turn speed. Because we want to move counterclockwise when we press A. And I'll set this to the turn speed. Okay, and if I do this right now, and I press A or D, it's going to start spinning with the velocity I set, but it's not going to stop. Just like when we set the linear velocity, you know, we're going to have to set that to zero. Here, let me show you. So, oh, well, we have two problems. One, it doesn't stop, it just keeps spinning. If I hold it down, it's going to spin and spin, and if I hold it the other way, it's going to spin and spin. But the other thing you may have noticed is that it's spinning from the top left. Well, as you imagine, that's because of the texture. The texture is being drawn from the top left. And if you remember, you know, love has an offset value we can use. I'm going to do that right now. So local OX, offset X, offset Y equals, and it's going to be the width divided by 2. Or I can do width times 0 0.5. That would be a little more efficient. Multiplication is always more efficient than division. So we'll set that here. So next values are scale. So scale is going to be 1. And then we'll do the offset. Okay, so now it should draw from the center. Okay, good. And we are rotating from the center now, and uh, I forgot to, I forgot to turn the velocity off. I forgot to turn the velocity to zero, I should say. So turn speed. Well, uh, sorry, not turn speed. 
We actually want to set it here, self.velocity, set angular velocity, and we're just going to set it to zero every single frame, and then it's going to check the keyboard. And if we have input, then it's going to set the turn speed. Otherwise, the velocity is going to be zero for the turn. Let's see that. Okay, good. Now it's not moving on its own. There is a better way to do this. I'm going to show you that later if there's time. Uh, let's try moving. And you, you can see what's going on here. We are only moving along the world's y value. So if I press up, it's going to be negative y. But that's the screen, the screen's Y, right? Not the car's Y. And the same if I move it down. But that's not what we want. You see, I've changed the orientation of the car using A and D. But I actually want to move the car along its, its orientation. I want to move it along its forward vector. If you've ever used a 3D game engine like Unity, you probably know that there's world space and then there's local space. At the very start, the object's local direction is perfectly lined up with the world's. But, as soon as its orientation changes, there's a new vector representing its forward vector. Note that the forward vector will always be negative y, not positive. We need to convert this forward vector to world space, and then multiply it by our speed, and apply it as our force. So box2d has a function that converts a local vector into world space called getWorldVector. The name is a little confusing. But what it does is it takes in a local vector. So the local forward is going to be 0 and negative 1. And then it converts that into world space. So let's do that right now with our code. Uh, we're going to cache our velocity, so we're going to create some new variables called dx and dy. And for now I'm just going to set that to 0, 0. Actually I'm going to set that to forward force and forward force. Yeah, don't worry about that. And instead of setting it directly here, I'm going to set it to dx and dy. And for backwards, it's going to be negative dx and negative dy. Okay, so what we need to do here is get our forward vector using the function I just showed. So that's going to be, I'm going to call it forward x and forward y. And it's going to be self.body get forward. Uh, sorry, get world vector. And as I said before, it's x, it's zero along x and negative one along y. Okay, so that gives us our forward direction and world space. So now all we need to do is multiply that by our force, because all that is is just a normalized value. So we need to scale that with the force, and then we're just going to multiply it here forward x and forward y. Okay, so that should be good enough. Let's see how that looks. Okay, uh, great. We are moving along the orientation of the car now, just like what we want. You can see though it still looks a lot like a spaceship with the way that it's drifting to the side. And we could also turn even when the car has no gas. It just turns in place like an arcade car controller. So I think we're going to cap it off here. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to constrain the car so it doesn't turn in place and it doesn't drift around like a spaceship. I'm very excited about that. So stay tuned. Thank you.